Good morning, everyone. We are going to Tuscany momentarily. Let me pin this. Um, we're going to Avignonese in Tuscany where they are drying grapes for Vincento, and we're going to see all of that. I'm very excited to talk to Max. Uh, he's a good guy, and we did a full vineyard chat about the winery, and we'll cover some of the same stuff to get everybody up to speed, but there is a longer uh, chat with Max in my previous, in my IGTV. And a few upcoming um, interviews from English Sparkling Wine Country and, uh, and Kava also, Kava producer. And Max is here. Uh, the Instagram gods are slow connecting us lately, but uh, it works. We did a test run. The connection was good. Um, I was kind of surprised that the grapes were already on the drying rack over in Tuscany. I know you're there, Max. It's so slow connecting lately. I'm sorry. Still hear you. I hear you. Yes, there you are. Everyone. Hello, sir. There you are. Good to see you, Jeff, again. It's, it's nice to see you, too. How are you? I'm fine. I'm uh, just, you know, uh, popped in at the, at the winery from the other winery where we have the reception of, of the grape, uh, uh -huh. I would say the normal, the normal Merlot and Sangiovese. Here we deal exclusively with the Vincento. So, so you, you are welcome to visit the, the heart of uh, the Vincento from Avignonese. Uh -huh. As you can see, uh, the entrance. Uh -huh. um, I'm, you've seen my face enough, so I'm going to switch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to switch the, the camera well, to the other Max, side. Max, hold on. Would you um, yeah. go back and just introduce yourself and tell us who you are um, briefly? I told people already they can go to the full interview. Oh, yeah. Two, weird, two words. But tell us who you are what? and where you are. How long, how long are we going to be online? 20 Maybe minutes? 20 minutes or so. Oh, so I'm going to make it very short. Okay. My name is Max De Sarove. I'm actually from the Basque country. I happen to uh, be the husband of Virginie Savaris, who is the owner of Avignonese, and I happen to be uh, the fund manager, not the fund manager, the fund manager that stands for whenever the shit hits the fan, I'm in charge. That's basically <laughs> my job. Okay. Uh, apart from that, I am, I'm the chairman of the company, but this is incidental. That has actually no uh, interest. So, um, well, uh, Avignonese, as you know, it's a very old uh, um, winery from uh, from Tuscany and uh, more specifically from Montepulciano where we are at the moment um, with your permission I'm going to switch the yep. camera now that I've done this quick introduction thank you Thanks and for coming back. let you have a view on where we are beautiful I mean this complex dates back from the third quarter of the 19th century okay and you know at uh, that time the nobile was Vino Nobile was ruling the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Brunello was not even born. Uh, look at what we had yeah. before the first. Actually, the first Nobile is from '88, I think, 1888, okay. mm -hmm. and this winery was built in 1882, 1886, okay. or something like that. So let's get into the heart of the matter. Enjoy my two specialists. Voilà, that's where we are. We are what we call the Apacitoyo. On the left-hand side, what you see is the uh, grape from the Vincento, which is mostly Malvasia and Trebbiano. Okay. And the right-hand side, Sangiovese. Um, we, let's walk. You, you will see it's actually beautiful because, I mean, this, this thing starts to get colors that are wow. really gorgeous. And, you know, this, this is already something that, you know, I, I, I salivate when I see that because I know yeah. it's something delicious. But you will have to wait a little time before you're able to enjoy that. And <laughs> I would say a decade at least. Wow. Uh, so, yeah. So this Max, is... Um, Max, this why, is are some, why are some grapes hanging and some are resting on the, on the straw uh, shelf? Because, because we're lacking of space on the huh? on, on the bamboo bait, so we put That's them. Uh, and also because we think it is some kind of uh, decor. It's much nicer <laughs> to have this hanging on the side. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, there is a part of a visual aspect. But there is one thing that you miss completely, and this is, uh, I would say, the 
the sad part of audiovisual is that you don't smell. Yes. But I mean, this room, uh, even the bricks have actually mm. digested the smell of the raisin through the years. And uh, even when we empty it, for months, the smell remains in the room wow. because it had penetrated the bricks. That's so many years of drying here. So, you know, this is Carmine and Italo, Hello. who are in charge today to actually lay down the uh, bunches to make sure that they will stay there ventilated until, I would say, the first day of January, when wow. we're going to actually take them. They will have dried and probably lost 30% of their water content. So they will turn into raisin. Um, there are some ventilators here, which we may use. Uh, but the ideal situation is whenever it freezes, we wide open the, the gates oh. and let the freeze come in because the temperature will, the low temperature helps to dry the grape even further and faster. Okay. So they will stay there a few months. And uh, here I'm going to show you something. Carmine, si mi lasci fare vedere questo. Grazie. Voilà. So I show you two bottles while they're working, which I put side by side. Yeah. Okay. So here we talk about Sangiovese, mm -hmm. pure Sangiovese. And uh, this is the bottle of Nobile from Avignanesi, uh, which is 100% Sangiovese. Mm -hmm. And this is the Occhio di Pernice, which is the red version of the Vincento. So to give you an idea, the amount of grapes required to do this bottle is the same as the one required to do that bottle. Oh, wow. So this is 0.75 and this is 10. So that's a ratio. So this process, which actually takes years, is divided in two actions. The first action is the one you're you know, seeing now, which is basically drying as much as we can the grapes. Mm -hmm. And whether they are white or red, they, take, they have exactly the same process. Uh -huh. It's very simple. It's just a very old tradition. And then, of course, you know, uh, when uh, January arrives, we take them out and we press them. Pressing them takes a long time because, of course, the, 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 most, the must is very thick. So we oh, have to count right. about something like two weeks of slow wow. pressing wow. to get a very thick uh, juice. Mm -hmm. And this very thick juice is actually moved into a different room, which is called the Apacitoio. I'm walking across okay. the piazzale. To, Can you say the word again? The, uh, the room that it's so called? We come, we come from the Apacitoio. Apacitoio is the place where it becomes raising. Uh -huh. And then we go to Vinsantaya, which is the other place, the second phase of the work, where it becomes Vinsanto or Occhio di Pernice if it's red. So it's a and few meters... Few meters Just before away. you go in there, I want to ask, um, so clearly they're picking the red grapes today, right now, and then they're laying yeah, them out. When did the absolutely. white Absolutely. So, I mean, there's a special squad, which is uh, uh, used for that, because we don't, we select carefully uh, the, um, the, the bunches to make sure that there is enough air between each berry, and they are not too bulky, because if they are too bulky, they may actually get some problems of disease or, or whatever. <laughs> So they have to dry, and to dry well, they need to be a little bit open. So uh, it's our best workers that actually are selected to do that job, and they walk along our vineyards, the Sangiovese, and they select the grapes specifically for the Vincento. We do that on the early part of the harvest to keep some acidity, because, of course, it's going to be a very, uh, <laughs> I would say, a very uh, sweet wine. And if it's too sweet, then, of course, it's not pleasant. So if uh, the ripeness is, I mean, if it's overripe, then it's not going to give a pleasant wine. It has to be a little bit crispy and, uh, on the tongue when you, when you taste the berry. And, uh, and then, we let, as I said, we let them there, we dry them, then we press them, and we bring them here. And that's the second phase. And the second phase is uh, special because... This is what we call the Vincentaya. Mm -hmm. This is a special place because windows are open all year long. 
and it's under the roof on the attic of the cellar. Oh. So this is really exposed to any variation of temperature along the year. So there, there is no protection. It's not like in the cellar. The wine is on the attic always. We put them, once the juice is made, into what we call caratelli, which is a little vessel in a Slav Slavonian oak, uh, which we reuse because they, they have not an eternal life, but they have a very long life. Mm -hmm. And we put the juice together with something very special, which is unique because, I mean, it's Avignonese's mother. That's what we call the mother. Uh, the mother, it's a kind of dark jelly, which could you could, to find something as a, uh, I would say, to give you an image, it looks like what you find in vinegar. You know, this kind of mother yeah. little thing, but, yeah. but more, more liquid, not as, I would say, uh, thicky, but a little bit more viscous. Okay. And uh, so we put about two liters of, up to here, if you see, two mm -hmm. liters of mother. And then we put, this is a 50 liter uh, uh, cask, gask. Uh, we put another, I would say, 46, 47, and we leave some space, okay. some air. So then we actually seal it with wax, as you oh. see here. Okay. All right. And the fermentation will actually start very slowly uh, in a closed and confined uh, area. The wood is uh, uh, porous enough to allow the CO2 to actually filter really? through. Wow. Yes. We happen to have some explosions, that, but this is not common. I mean, but it, it may happen if actually the fermentation goes too fast and that the wood cannot let it go out. But in general, I would say 99% of the case, it's not an issue because what's going to happen is that, of course, when the, the thing is done in, in the, I would say, uh, after the press, we're talking the winter. So the winter will slow down the uh, fermentation because the temperature is very low. Uh, because don't forget, we are, we are on the attic. So um, the, the fermentation will really start to work... Uh, I would say full swing in spring. Okay. Stop during the summer because it's too hot again. And resume at fall because the temperature is good for, for fermenting again. So it's okay. a kind of process of fermentation that goes a kind of cyclical way. Right. It goes up and down, up and down, and it goes actually on a very slow process. We think because we've done some studies, but it could vary, of course, depending on the position of the caratello, whether it's close to the window or close to the ceiling or right in the middle, oh. they don't progress the same way. And, you know, they stay there for minimum 10 years. Wow. So after 10 years, what happens is that, of course, the angel share is gigantic because most of the wine is gone. So this is a second phase of concentration. Mm -hmm. So once the 10 years have gone, sometimes 12 or 14 years, it depends. It's up to our winemaker to decide. We open the Caratello, or the, the vintage of Caratelli. Sure. We open them, we empty them, we separate the mother from the wine. Mm -hmm. Then we put the mother aside because we're going to reuse it for the next year that is coming at the time we will empty the caratel. So when, you know, it's a movement in and out. And we use the mother again, and the mother feeds on the, on the wine. And this is how actually it survives through the years. And so... so after yeah. 10 years, how, how full are the barrels? Half, half of what wow. we put. Wow. 50% went away. So that explains the concentration I showed with the bottles earlier. Mm -hmm. You see? Because this, this, this is the secret of Vincento, is of course the mother, because nobody else on earth has that one. It belonged to the Earl of Ignanesi. It, you know, we don't know how old it is, a few hundred years, something like that. I mean, there is no, uh, I would say, no um, written trace of it, but we know it was in the family, so we have inherited it. And, you know, it feeds on the wine as we fill it in. So, I mean, it's kind of an eternal thing that grows. Um, 
what we have observed is that we could have a growth of one or two percent per year, uh, but we cannot double the production overnight. It's impossible. <laughs> this is a very slow process. So, voila. Why is it under the attic? It's something which has to be said about the Vincento is that it is not originally has never been a commercial wine. Mm -hmm. The Nobile was the commercial wine from Montepulciano has always been since I would say the Renaissance until uh, today. Uh, but the Vincento is a family wine. This is actually something that people keep under the roof in the attic. The attic and the roof is a symbol of the house. It's a symbol of what protects the family. And it would be drunk only on family occasions, be it a wedding, a christening, sometimes even funerals when the family gathers. And this is very symbolic from the family because the mother is always connected to one family and one family only. So the Vincento from my neighbor here in Montepulciano, even if he does it with grapes that uh, is picked up in our vineyard, will give a completely different taste because the, his, his mother doesn't have the same DNA as our mother. Each mother is different. Mm, that's fascinating. So w when we open them, we can taste the difference between those on the top and those in the bottom because they don't taste the same way because they didn't evolve. Uh, they evolved completely separately. But we blend them. We, if we have a problem, we will eliminate the one that didn't work well because the fermentation was stopped for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And the ones that we consider are of high quality will be blended together and we will bottle it. But before bottling it, we will have to keep it another further year to decant okay. to make sure that you know every impurity, every remaining parts of the mother will actually drop to the bottom. And only at that time, we will we will bottle it. So oh. it's a long, long process. Doesn't require a lot of work, but it's a, it's a, in this extension in time is something quite exceptional. But very few wines have such a long process. Yeah, really. So, and as I said, it's something which is so connected to the family that I would say uh, the first wine that uh, a Tuscan young child is allowed to taste by dipping his finger in it on the family occasion mm -hmm. is the Vincento. So That's every, awesome. if you ask a Tuscan guy, what was your first experience in wine? He will always say, you know, it was uh, at, I don't know, the, uh, the wedding of uh, my brother or my grand sister. And I could put my finger in my grandmother's glass and taste the Vincento. Wow. Now, talking about it, here it is. That's gorgeous. Here it is too. Uh, the bottle you sent me, I broke it open today. Oh, uh, that's cool. So you see we have numerous visitors here that actually come also for that, for the Nobile, of course. But that gives you an idea of how thick it could be. Unfortunately, yeah, really. you can, I don't know how good is the, how sharp is the light, but you can see how it glues on, yeah, on the side of the glass. Unfortunately, wow. you don't have the smell. This is, this is actually it's unbelievable. The most, it's the, it's most, unbelievable. the most amazing thing you can have. And this is really Sandra Vizzi at his best. So I'm sorry, I will punch you and put my, my face to you <laughs> so that we can have a dialogue and, and you know, I love drink it. that together. Um, it's can a I pleasure. Ask you a couple, couple questions, yeah. Max. Somebody asked, what's the residual sugar in the finished wine? Mm. It varies. It varies from um, uh, from barrel to barrel. So I won't be able to give you a precise answer on that. But it's rather high. But in spite of the high residual sugar that there is in it, fermentation goes well, and we manage to get sometimes twelve plus fourteen, almost fourteen degrees in uh, oh, wow. in these wines. Yeah. yeah. In spite of the amount of sugar that uh, that is there. Yeah. Yeah, but, but like you said. From, sorry, oh, sorry, cut you off. Finish what, what you were saying. Sorry. No, no. I mean, I'm just saying that it's very sweet, uh, and uh, that there's no yeah. doubt about that. But you were saying earlier you pick a little early because you want that acid, and the acid is just it's it's, it's incredible. Um, yeah. The, yeah. What is the difference between like when would you serve the one with the red with the red grapes? Or I didn't even know there was a, a Vincenta with red with Sangiovese and I was blown away how nutty and like black walnut that was where this is a little more, a little bit lighter nuts, like chestnut and uh, almond. 
Yeah, I mean, this, uh, there aren't many Vincento made with red in Tuscany. I think that Virginie checked that and she found eight or nine producers. So it's a fairly limited number. Uh, I have to pay tribute to uh, uh, Ettore Falvo, the previous owner of uh, Avignonese, from whom we, we bought the winery. Uh, that is the one who has been promoting it. And, uh, you know, Sangiovese is a, I mean, is playing at home in Montepulciano. People tend to forget that the cradle of the Sangiovese is Montepulciano, historically. And, and of course, it, we thought that beyond the Nobile, it was, he thought that beyond the Nobile, it was important to have another product of excellence. Uh, made 100% with Sangiovese, and he decided already in the 70s, if I'm not mistaken, early 70s, yes, 74, he decided to produce this kind of uh, Vincento with the mother he received from his father-in-law, Geo Avignonesi, because he married the daughter of Avignonesi, and um, he received that as a wedding present from his father-in-law. So, you know, that was uh, a kind of new version or recreation of uh, the Vincento, which usually was made with with white, uh, but there are there are there are few producers who make it with with Sangiovese, and in my personal opinion, I'm a Sangiovese fanatic, as you can imagine. This is uh, this is probably uh, the most um, I would say quintessential expression of what you can do with with the Sangiovese. It's stunning. I have to say, I was blown away. Um, now, this is a more basic question, but if I leave a bunch of grapes on the table, they're going to rot. But in your drying room, I guess it's just the heat and the air movement that prevents that. And then once, if I put a glass of grape juice or must out, that's going to rot. But, and especially considering the, the fermentation is so slow once it's in barrel, is it just the sugar content that is the preservative until the alcohol content rises? So, two-part question. Yeah, I mean, you, you're going to very technical things. Uh, I may say things that are not correct, so I prefer to uh, avoid answering too precisely. Sure. Uh, yes, vent ventilation is essential. That's the reason, actually, we, we put it in this room in the dark. This room is ventilated with, uh, you know, either naturally or with uh, ventilators. Mm -hmm. um, and as I said, we are helped with the frost because winter frost contributes a lot. Um, that's 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 for sure an element. The second question was sorry, I, I I missed it. So it's you normally if you make your wine, your pressed juice starts to ferment, and that prevents it from going bad. But when you put it in the barrel and seal it up, and you said the fermentation is very very slow, why doesn't that spoil? Is it just that the sugar content is already high enough from the dried grapes? I, I mean, your your what you say is probably true. I think that the mother has also a role to play. Because, because the mother is also carrying, uh, as far as I understand, the mother uh, brings some acidity and, um, and, and somehow tempers the, uh, the, the, the sugar. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes the kind of equilibrium between one and the other. Right. Um, the, the, the grapes, when they stay on, on the drying room, at a certain stage, you can see that they start to be covered with a little white oh, really? dust. Okay. Yes. At the very end of, of the period, which in my opinion is yeast that is actually uh, agglutinating on, on the skin. So all these factors, uh, you know, are magic because we, we don't open the, I mean, winemakers, our winemakers have been making some exercise, opening some and making some tests and things like that. We, but we, we have not been to, to the bottom of it yet, you know. This is just tradition. So yeah. the only thing we do is do what the others were doing before us. And we don't necessarily understand every step. Yeah, uh, and crazy this is, cool, though. Yeah, this is, you know, I mean, uh, I, I'm sure that uh, one day we will crack the secret of it. But uh, for the time being, we let, we let nature do it and we keep on the tradition. Yeah. Uh, that's you know we, we have to be very humble uh, with regard to that. We we have a very little control of what's going on there. 
it's amazing. It's really amazing. And that our ancestors knew what they were doing so well before, and we still don't have the science to answer what, why it worked. Uh, Jeff, I mean, you know, Pasteur was living in the last part of the 19th century, and uh, wine has been made for 6,000 years, and nobody knew actually how it happened. So, yeah. you know, we, we, science has still a lot of things to discover, I'm afraid. No, but I, that's part of the beauty of it. Um, I kept you longer than I said I would, so I will let you go. I apologize for the siren outside. Um, no problem. Any last words before we before I let you go? I really appreciate your time, Max. No, I mean, first of all, I want to thank you for this opportunity because I think it's a, it's a great thing, and we we should that, do that more often. Yeah. I just want to say something about Montepulciano Channel in general. Please uh, come and visit us. Uh, I can assure you this is not a punishment. This place is absolutely beautiful, and that's a very long history. So whoever is uh, listening to, to your program here should uh, you know, keep in mind that there is a paradise on Earth, and it's called Montepulciano, and they make fantastic wines there, I promise. Yeah, yeah. And your website has a really good list of all the things that you guys offer. There's a lot of fun things to do there. So. Absolutely, um, and we're, we have a gorgeous restaurant here. They could come and have delicious Tuscan food to pair the wines we, uh, we pour endlessly to them. One day soon. Thank you, Max. It's really a pleasure to get inside the making of this wine. It's, it's magical. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time and Take this care. opportunity. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>